aerated static piles. I'm gonna get into a little bit more detail with this. This is something that's kind of newer, or I don't know how many people have heard of it. There's a guy named Peter Moon with O2 Compost who uh, consults with people. He had consulted with a place, the large scale facility that I worked with. He sold us the system and he was supposed to consult with them, but they basically kind of handed it off to me and I just like figured everything out on my own and had to teach myself how to run it. I mean, I had some, so a bit of guidance, but it was mainly I was thrown to the wolves and figured it out myself. But like I said, I, I initially, because of my background with soil microbiology and knowledge of like aerobic microorganisms and anaerobic stuff and ways of managing compost, I didn't have a lot of hope for this. Um, but after making it on my own scale in my own yard, I was thrilled to see the biology that I saw. So how many of you have heard of aerated static piles or ASP? Not very many. Okay, so we're gonna get some pictures, but it's basically normally forcing air up into a pile by using a blower through electrical means. Some people pull air, I'm not sure exactly how that works. Uh, but through my experience at a large scale facility, we used a lot of tractors, a lot of heavy equipment. Things were constantly breaking down to the point where I'm, I'm telling you like, you need to focus on the temperatures uh, for when to turn your compost pile. And sometimes you need to turn them right then. But like when you're on a large scale facility with windrows and it's just poured down rain the day before and you've had a monsoon, you can't get out there and turn it. Or your piece of equipment is broken down for two weeks and you're waiting for it to come back. What are you gonna do? You can't get your piles turned and then your biology's going downhill. Uh, and also as a society, I feel like we need to move away from being petroleum dependent and petroleum based and find low tech means of composting and dealing with waste or resources. And I see this as a low tech, low energy way of processing things and, and getting good biology. And you could run it off of solar power too even though it relies on electricity. So the materials you need for an aerated static pile, and I'll have a picture up in a second here for you to see all this. Um, a half to one horsepower blower. It's the same type of blower that they use for bouncy houses, um, like the when you take kids to go play at the little bouncy houses. Uh, you wanna house your blower from the elements, so no rain or stuff like that gets to it. I had a blower, so, so I'm running this on a timer for like, 30 seconds, four times an hour. So it's on for two minutes per hour. And in two months time, I had a blower, the, the propeller inside broke. And I was like, how do you run it for two hours per minute or two minutes per hour and the propeller breaks? So I don't know what happened, but that's why you especially want to keep it in a house that it's going to keep it out of element and keep animals away from it. And then you want a programmable cycle timer. And I've got a picture of one of those in a second here. So you want to be able to, because you don't want to have to go out there every 15 minutes and turn it on. <laughs> so you hook it up to, uh, so this is a timer that's different from like, uh, like Home Alone, Kevin uses the timers to come on at night to, to make it look like he's got the party going on. Those only come on once a day and you want this to come on multiple times per day, multiple times per hour. So what you need is a different type of programmable cycle timer. And then six inch PVC is gonna be a manifold, uh, which takes the air from the blower and puts it out to your other tubes that are gonna be covered. So you need six inch PVC for the manifold and then some T's, 90 degree elbows, and you'll see a picture of these in a second here. And then you want uh, polypropylene pipe. So I did my research and I always try to do, th I mean most people try to do things as inexpensively as possible, but I really don't have any money so I, I try to do what I can with what I can and scavenge what I can. Um, and I was hoping to get by with inexpensive PVC. But the rating, the temperature rating for PVC is like a 135 or 145. And we're trying to push 160. So it's most likely going to not melt, but it's going to it's going to warp. And plus, you've got a lot of weight on there. So heat and weight, it's going to disfigure those pipes. So you want to get polypropylene pipe. Um, the the Peter Moon use, gets, I don't know where he purchases them, but he's able to get these smooth pipes and it's double walled and my emphasis on the smooth. So uh, if you've got tons of material piled on top of these pipes, 
it's really hard to pull out the pipes, but if they're smooth, it's, it's a bit easier if you were to like hook up a tractor to it. Otherwise, you have to pull the material out from away from the pipes. We'll get into that kind of detail in a second. That might not make sense to what I'm trying to say. Uh, so you want dual wall, four inch pro polypropylene pipes. And the ones that I was using was like the landscape um, drainage pipes. And someone said that you can buy pre-drilled ones you want to drill, the, I don't even remember what size holes I drilled. It was about 3 8 ish inch. And I don't know what Peter's Moon's directions is, but I did every, the first time I did it, I drilled like every 12 inches. And then I went back. I was like, I've got a lot of blowing power from this blower. I'm just going to go ahead and put more holes in there to try and increase the air. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead real quick here. This is the manifold. So this is what it looks like. Blower, manifold, pipes. So these pipes, you want to drill holes to be able, you're pushing air through this into these pipes. You're going to stack material. We're going to get to the picture of this. Stack material on top of here, but you want to be pushing air up from those pipes. So with the pipes, this is an end view of the pipe. You want to drill your holes at like 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock. So this is where you're drilling the hole into the pipe. And you drill those every four or six inches all along the pipe. And then that pipe gets laid down so that the holes are pointing down. Uh, if you point them up, then you're taking the chance of getting stuff to go in the holes. And you just, the air is going to come out and, and go up. So then you're also going to need reducers from six inch to four inch. And this all depends on how big your setup is. And then you want some four inch caps to cap off the ends of your pipes so that you're not just blowing air out the ends of your pipes and you got that capped off. It's going to be pushing air more up through your material. This is the blower motor. Um, so this, it's kind of weird here because this blower motor is like this big and that thing's like this big. So it's not really scalable. <laughs> but yeah, so we've got a blower motor that you hook up to your programmable timer. And that one right there, so you see on the top, it's on for two minutes and it's off for a minute. That's not what I would normally set it at. This is just the picture I found online. But you would program it so you know, you're know you on for 30 seconds, off for 15 minutes. We'll get into the details of that in a second. Manifold, so you're, we, we're going to get that picture in a second here. Your blower gets put right here. This is your main manifold that I've got put together, 90 degree. T, 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 90 degree, reducer, 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 reducer. So that's a four to six, six inch to four inch reducer. And then you hook up your polypropylene pipes here. Um, I'm sorry, but I didn't take measurements on any of this stuff. But those are about, I think I bought those. Do they come in 25 foot lengths than I cut them in half? Whatever they cut, wherever they come in, I cut it in half and I bought two of them. So this is like 12 to 15 feet wide and 15 feet that way. So then I've got a cap. I've capped off that end so that the air is just going to be coming out the pipes and not blowing out the end. Just another picture to give you another view of it. So then you want to, when you build it, you want to add, the best thing to use is wood chips on the bottom six to nine inches. And I've got a picture of that for a plenum. And that's just going to be a space where you're not having material down up against the pipes. So you've got air flow and circulation around the area of the pipes there. And then before building the ASP, you want to mix your browns and greens real well. I initially put this together and didn't mix them real well. And I had about at least 30 yards of material that I moved by hand twice. With this, the ratio that I used ended up being about two-thirds browns to a third green. So I had wood chips, I had leaves, and I had straw. And you'll see that in the picture coming up here. And then I had food waste that I put onto that. And I relied on moisture from the food waste and moisture from rain. And we have heavy downpours in Tennessee. And I didn't have this covered, but I, it was on a bit of an incline, decline. So the rain, I'm guessing that's just why the rain ran off. Uh, so you pile the materials onto your pipes up to 8 feet tall, 10 feet tall. I mean, this is kind of like how far I could go by hand. I can't really raise stuff up that high. And then you want to keep your materials within a 2 to 3 feet perimeter of the outside of your pipes. 
So you don't want to really get much more than two feet outside of this. And then you would keep it around here because you don't want to be digging out your PVC. You don't want to have cover that materials up because if you cover up your PVC and then you're trying to dig through to get your material out and you hit it with your pitchfork or something like that, you could break your PVC and then you got to buy new PVC. All right, so I've got my layer of wood chips here. This picture is kind of dark in this setting, but uh, over my pipes, it ends up sticking up about nine, 10 inches. And then in between the pipes, it's probably like six inches. And then I put some straw on top of there. And then I put my food waste on top of there. And then I put some more wood chip straws and leaves on the top of that. It would have been ideal to have a bed, like I explained to you guys in the beginning. If I would have made a bed over here, dumped the food waste onto my bed of wood chips, turned it all together to mix it in, and then flip it all onto this so it's all mixed together. But I was doing it all by hand, and I was dealing with like two to 300 pound bins that I'm trying to move by hand, which is really difficult. So I just kind of did it all at once. So just learn from my mistakes. Um, I had to get the food waste in increments, so I, I just got so much at one time and I got so much again. So this is me having built part of a pile. You can see some food waste on top. This is my thermometer sticking out. That's my pitchfork. And then, I don't know if I have another picture, but it will have built a hole, piled everything up over this. So this is an example to show you this some of my starting material, I would, it, you, this fish head is like that big. It's huge. And then you've got cucumbers that are like that big. I mean, these are the start, starting materials. And I'm, I'm only showing you this so that you can see how quickly this stuff breaks down. You're going to see a sequence of, over time, how quickly this stuff breaks down. And it's pretty amazing that you've got a fish head that big that then turns into soil rather quickly. <laughs>